Hey, welcome back to another episode of Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress. And today I get to talk with our good friend, Fran Miller, owner of So Glorious. And Fran was actually on the podcast, I think last year, talking about how she hosts fittings at home and how she was able to fit the fittings in with her family flow and, and how to set up her house for fittings. So today she's here to talk about a completely different topic, uh, Dubsado. So Dubsado is a, pro, uh, a program that she uses for automating these mundane tasks in her business. So if you think back to a couple weeks ago, Brie McQueen was in the podcast and she was telling us how she hired like a physical real real life person <laughs> to help with some of her business tasks and how she also started automating some of her daily tasks to get them off her plate. And so today, Fran is diving a little bit deeper into that subject of automating tasks by talking about Dubsado. So we're going to include a link for you to explore Dubsado. And I'm also including a link um, to Square Up because I mentioned that in the podcast too. That's actually what I currently use because it's free. So I'm like, okay, a few years ago when I knew something kind of had to shift, I started using Square Up for my business and that takes care of communication with with clients. Well, let, let me rephrase that. It doesn't necessarily take care of communication. It's a way to communicate with your clients so that they don't have your phone number. You can send out invoices, you can send out appointment reminders, um, you can send out your booking link, you can allow online booking, give your uh, brides free access to your booking link through Square Up. There are a lot of great benefits. And like I said before, it's free. So it's a great way to get your feet wet with um, automating your business. However, the reason I'm excited about Dubsado is because it can help you even more with automating those daily tasks. First and foremost, your email communications, which I feel like I'm always emailing <laughs> and I'm always checking my email and trying to stay on top of my bridal inquiries. And that's something that I do not have necessarily automated. I have like drafts that I can send out to brides, but it's not an automated response. So that is like a number one selling point for me to check out Dubsado among so many other benefits. So you'll hear more about that from Fran. I don't want to take that away from your experience. I want you to hear it from the source. And it's funny because Fran kept saying how she's not, you know, a pro on this subject, but I was listening to her and I'm like, yes, actually you are a pro. She um, has a lot of experience with the program and she was telling us that there are even more benefits that she hasn't e even explored yet. So there's a lot of uh, information in this podcast episode, just to give you a heads up. You may want to take some notes and um, both of the links for both of those pro programs that I just mentioned will be in the show notes for you to explore. Um, yeah, I'm really excited because there's a lot of things that we do that can be set to automation. We can get some help with these programs and take a lot off of our plate so we can focus on the sewing or the fun part or being, you know, in person with our clients once they come to the door. Um, before we get into the conversation, I wanted to tell you, um, about a bride that I just saw last week. And it was really cool. It kind of took me back to our recent conversation with Leslie Presnell last week um, about growing your local business and the power of like the word of mouth. So I had a bride um, coming in, you know, for her first fitting. And in the course of the conversation, I was like, oh yeah, well, how did you hear about my business? Or how'd you hear about Sweet Francis? Um, it was more organic than that. I wasn't like, how did you hear about me? But it just came up. And so she was saying that she went to go see her chiropractor. She was talking about how she bought this dress that was too big. She needs to get it altered. Where do I go? And another patient walked up to her and was like, oh, you need to go to Sweet Francis because my friend got married a couple of years ago and she did her dress and look, and then she started showing her pictures of her friend's dress. So it wasn't even the bride herself talking about me. It was like a friend of the bride who was sharing this referral. And I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't make like a huge, huge deal of it when the bride was in front of me because I didn't want to like weird her out. But I sometimes get so caught up in like, you know, the online presence or like how does my website look or make sure it's like, I'm like refreshing it or like is my um, Instagram current or whatever. And sometimes I forget about the power of the word of mouth. Like when you provide a 
service or an experience worth remembering, then your friends or your friends, yeah, I guess your brides become your friends. Um, your brides will tell their friends and then the friends will even speak for you. So sometimes taking a step back and thinking beyond like your, you know, quote unquote, like marketing strategy and just thinking about the service itself that you're providing and how that speaks for itself. It's really powerful. So I was really encouraged just by that little experience. And I was like, Oh, I need to tell you guys that especially Yeah, after just talking with Leslie, it was on my mind of like, how to think beyond, you know, your Instagram numbers or whatever. (laughs) or like your website clicks, it's like, it does go beyond that. So um, yeah, just a little encouragement for you. Uh, You're probably being talked about right now in a really good way. So um, all right, enough about that. Let's uh, listen to Fran. And I hope you're inspired to start automating some of those daily to do's. Okay, let's tune in. Okay, we have Fran Miller back. You came I think like last season or maybe the beginning of the season. I forget maybe, yeah, when yeah. I started, I think we've been in season three for a long time. So <laughs> I think I'm <laughs> tracking those, but um, your last episode was about um, hosting fittings in your home because you have this beautiful like annex to your house for your uh, fittings. But today Fran is here to tell us all about the magic of Dubsado. Yes. That might be like a brand new word to people. So right. And there, I know that there's a meaning to it. I don't, I didn't look it up. Sorry. <laughs> All of these like websites where it's like, where did that name come from? We just right. like even assume there's a good origin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> did you see the post recently where it was like, how do you pronounce it? Mm-hmm. How do mm-hmm. you pronounce it? How do you say it? I don't know. Oh, I think Wawak. I'm doing it right. Wawak? Wawak? I mean, I, sh- I shortened the second syllable. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So what is um, wedding season like, you know, March in Pennsylvania? Actually, it's interesting because I um, am, I follow a lot of different vendors on Instagram Mm -hmm. from this area, photographers, planners, cake artists, whatever. And they're all like, okay, we're getting ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I've been working on dresses already. <laughs> I'm not know. getting ready anymore, you know? So yeah. I only had one uh, wedding in um, February. And now I've got several in March, April, May. Yep. May is ramping yeah. up. But yeah. I was careful to cap the amount of people that I took this year so I wouldn't become mm-hmm. stressed. Yes. So I, yeah, I'm sure, sure I probably could have taken more, but I didn't. Yeah. I feel like it came sooner than normal. Like, I don't know if it's because um, this like wedding generation is huge, I feel like, but then also like the venues are booking up. So I think that's why some couples had to like push out to like February, March, which they're not mm-hmm. really ideal. Okay. Today's actually my wedding anniversary. So I was a March bride. Oh, that's right. But- Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. But um, typically like February, March are not awesome wedding months around here because the weather's kind of bad and like you don't get the beautiful outdoor shots but I saw like several like February brides more than usual and then um and I I'm trying to get my earlier spring brides in like um or not early spring but like my May June I had them come in earlier just there's always Mm -hmm. those last minute June brides so I'm like let me get some people out of the way and so that's kind of been nice but yeah it just seems a little bit like busier than normal but I think it's just this year it's like Mm -hmm. I think so too Plus, well, I it. ended at the end of the year last year. I had several New Year's Eve brides. Oh, so okay. like I had a big break. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That makes a big difference if you're still sewing through December. I like to have a couple months where I'm like, Ooh, cleanse my palate. I know. We're used to that teacher summer vacation, aren't we? I know. I know. <laughs> and it's like, that stinks because it's totally opposite. And I love summer out here. And so like you, I'm trying to just cap my monthly brides and not overdo it. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm grateful that it started earlier. So like my quota is being met earlier and I'm not depending mm-hmm. on that, like, you know, summer condensed work. So anyway, right. okay. So we recently heard from Bree McQueen. She's in... Ontario, I think. And she was talking about like hiring out for different parts of the business. And Mm -hmm. she's like, I only have two hands and I make money, you know, when I'm sewing with these hands. So she talked about like actually hiring a person to help with like scheduling and things like that. 
or I think she has a person to help with social media and billing or something. I don't know. Um, I should remember these details, but um, I know one of the things that she did early on that helped, you know, just organize her thoughts and, and keep things on track was using an automated system. And she kind of breezed over the title of what she used, but I thought of you because Dubsado has been your go-to and I've, I've heard you talk about it and I'm like, this needs to be out in the world because, and for me personally too, I use square up and I do love square up. Um, and so somebody else was also mentioning that they use their square space for scheduling and invoices, but I want to hear more about this tip So I'm taking notes. Okay. So take it away. So first, <laughs> when were you first introduced? <laughs> well, I, that's what I was going to say. Um, I heard my daughter who is a wedding cake. Artist. She's an award winning. Yes, cake she is. Yeah. Cause what Halloween. did, what did she recently win? Right. Halloween baking oh. championship season seven winner. Mm-hmm. Celebrity yeah. status. Right. So, anyway, um, she had been using Acuity to do her scheduling Mm -hmm. and I started using that. And then later on, I said to her, I don't know if this is doing it for me because I have other things that I have to do too. Right. Not just the scheduling. It's nice that that's automated. She said, oh, I'm using Dubsado. And I thought, oh, tell me about it. And she said, oh, that's what you need to move to. I oh. thought, all right, fine. So I had for several years, three, four years, been, well, I guess three years, been using Acuity to do scheduling and then Excel spreadsheets for my finances yeah, and keeping track of who my brides were. Mm-hmm. And also I was using my, my Gmail and Word to yeah. do all of the invoicing. That's like five things. <laughs> like, this is great. Click here, click here. And I figured it out. I really sat down and thought about this this morning. I was spending 15 to 20 hours a week doing that stuff. Cause I wow. figured like two hours in the morning, I'd get up and I'd go into the little office and I'm doing the emails mm-hmm. and whatever. And then of course at night I'm doing the same thing and yeah, ugh, crazy. So when she said, you can automate all that. And I said, well, okay, I still want some control. Mm-hmm. Right. Always um, same. Yeah. Love I know. <laughs> right. I don't want all these emails flying out and invoices flying out. Or the, the booking link going out before I'm ready. I'm very micromanaged right. about that. And I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. So uh, she said, no, no, no. You can control all that. Okay, great. Yeah. So I did look into it myself and she showed me a little demo at her house when we sat down at her computer and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. So I did buy Dubsado um, at Thanksgiving. They do have a Black Friday sale. Okay. And then if you use a code from an affiliate, hello, um, <laughs> you get a discount too. <laughs> we'll have that in the show notes. <laughs> right. And once you um, purchase Dubsado at a particular price, that's always the price. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. They don't do an increase. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they don't do add-ons either. So, okay, you know, cool. you look at the, the notes that say um, what's new, you know, the release mm-hmm. notes, and then you know what's new. It's not like, oh, but if you want this. Right. Extra seven ninety nine a month or whatever. Yeah. And they do have their little free version. That's kind of your taste test. Oh, that's but, really good to know. Yeah, yeah. But once you get started in it, I mean, you have to build it. See, that's the thing. So in no way am I a Dubsado ex- expert. They do have. Um, if you get excited about using this tool, you can take their Dubsado certification course, and then you can be the person who helps people on board for Dubsado, mm-hmm. like in an official capacity. You know, they mm-hmm. help promote you and whatever, but that's not me. I'm still learning. And even this morning, I discovered something on it that I was <laughs> like, oh, you need to learn how to do yeah. this. You know? But for now, I think you're the best rep. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've been using it for two years now. Right. So, what happens is when you get into the tool, yes, you have to build it. You have to put in all of your emails that mm-hmm. you would send out to people. You're like your introductory email, your, oh, it's time for a fitting email, or it's time for a follow up fitting, or here's mm-hmm. your invoice, here's your contract, whatever. So you have to put all of those emails in. You need to put all your forms in. So your contract goes in there. 
Um, I have a pricing guide that goes in there that I can send out to people. Um, my invoices, in fact, they create the invoice for you. Nice. And you can you put your branding colors in there. So the invoice mm -hmm. goes out with your branding in it. Yeah. Logo or whatever. So that's nice. So you have to build it. Right. That's time. Right. right. They have a scheduler. And so you have to determine the types of appointments that you want to create. Mm -hmm. So for example, my initial fitting appointment is 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it will help block out that time. It also syncs with your Google calendar or any other oh. calendar that you use. So if I put in like, you know, I'm going to my sister's this weekend from nine to 11 and, you know, okay, I'll take fittings in the afternoon. It won't book anybody from me from nine to 11. That's great. Right. Because right now I am doing two separate calendars. Yes, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. I, I did that, you know. And then it's like, oh, I forgot that I have a haircut. Uh, can we reschedule? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to remember when I make the hair appointment, I have to put drive to hair in there. Yes. Someone will, you know, <laughs> schedule an appointment back to back with my hair. Like, I gotta get there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I put you Paul all of that information in there and you configure it the way you want it to to be. Mm -hmm. And then you have to write down what's your workflow? Mm -hmm. Meaning what's your process? So does someone fill out an alterations inquiry form? from your website or do you have them call you? And then what, what do you want, how do you want the emails to be triggered? And what do you want to be in those emails? An invoice, a contract, just a hi, get to know you email, what do you want? And how far apart do you want those emails to get to people? So mm -hmm. for example, I created, it's called a lead capture form. And it's my form on my website. So you embed the code in your website. Not hard to do. They even give you all kinds of videos to show you how to do these things. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And people fill out my inquiry form. And that triggers an email to me that says, you have a new lead. Mm -hmm. And I can click on the lead and it'll take me to all the things that they filled out. Mine's a little, a very brief questionnaire because you don't mm -hmm. want to bombard them with questions too early. And so I have two emails that can be triggered to them. One that says, yes, you're in. Here's an invoice and my contract. You have two weeks to sign it and get me the money. Mm -hmm. right? Or, so sorry, I'm full. You know, can't, can't help yeah. you out here. Yeah. That's and, probably great um, accountability for you too, because then you don't have to go back and forth and like, well, you just click uh, the button. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's so wonderful. <laughs> and yeah. I've noticed, like you learn, people then would email me back when I would say, I'm so sorry, I don't have room. They'd email me back. Well, who do you know? Mm -hmm. So I've learned, I've changed that email and you can go in and edit it anytime. Yeah. Or you can even, for that one person, go into their workflow and edit it just for them. But I edited that email saying, um, I really haven't seen anybody's work personally, locally, so I don't feel comfortable recommending anybody. Mm -hmm. so in other words, don't ask me. Right. <laughs> but in a nice way, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I, so I've learned a lot, like, like for my daughter, I think for her, as soon as that inquiry comes in, boing, something goes out with a with a an invoice in it. Not for me. I want to make sure I have room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's totally up to you. You have the control. Yeah. So yeah. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, now there's that customer part. Then there's the behind the scenes part that I just started discovering in the last year that yeah. I absolutely love. Um, because there's a dashboard on it and I'm like looking at the dashboard and it's, and it's telling me how much money I'm making. Oh, fun. And I'm like, Oh, how'd they get that number? I'd like to know. Mm -hmm. And cause I know I'm not making that much cause I'm spending money. Mm -hmm. well, I realized you could put in all your expenses. <gasps> yes. I love that. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah. And when you put the expense in, you select the category that the expense is in. So, so you're already doing tax prep. 
Absolutely. Oh you, my goodness. You should have seen me during tax time the last few years. It was just a hot mess. Yeah. No, I'd rather sew and create bales, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> than use than work with numbers. Yeah. And it was just awful. And this time around, I went in there and I just had to put in the last quarter, the dates, mm -hmm. and then boom, up came a little chart that tells me how much money I spent on materials, how much money I spent on web fees, how much money I spent on, you know. Um, wow. And salary. you're doing that throughout the whole year. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's like you can just, wow, that is awesome. It's oh my goodness. Wonderful. My mind is blown. Yeah. Because with Square Up, I love it. It's free. I'm like, okay, no complaints here. Mm -hmm. But with the, um, it keeps track of your income and your your tips that are separate. And then the only thing that it's that it deducts is like the um, transaction fees. Mm -hmm. right. So there's no way to really track. Oh, I'm so intrigued. Yeah. Okay, this mm -hmm. is really exciting. Yeah. And the other thing that I noticed is, and I started doing is that, like, I bought. Um, horse hair braid for a veil that I'm making for someone because they wanted mm -hmm. it trimmed in the horse hair braid. And um, when the horse hair braid came in and I wanted to put that into my expenses, I can attribute it to that project, to that person. Yeah. Wow. It's really nice. Wow. So, mm -hmm. That is awesome. So how, like you said, you're spending like 15, 20 hours a week pre dubsado yeah. So how, like, how often do you have to go in and like update it or like, put well, things in? I, like I'll sit down if I know that I've done like a lot of purchasing of things, you know, cause sometimes mm -hmm. it happens like all at once and other times yeah. eh, dribble and drabble, you know, but, um, so I would say I'm spending less than five hours a week on all of that administrative stuff. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is so great. I think just the, like, I have a form on my website. So when they, you know, they mm -hmm. bring in their inquiry form and I do have like a preset email that gets sent out, but I have to click on the web, you know, their, um, mm -hmm. their email address and then copy and paste and send it, whatever. So, I mean, I feel like I've gotten a good flow that that's not taking me forever, but the thought of having that automated and I'm just, I'm thinking too, of like your bride's perspective when they're seeing this business that's like super organized that like they're going to get a response immediately they're mm -hmm. going to get some questions answered you could if you have like an investment guide or more information about your pricing like that can get sent to them like i think as a bride it'd be like oh okay this person is legit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. instead of and like waiting for a comment call made back. to me mm -hmm. yes or like oh this person's texting me that's weird you know what I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> i have had that comment made to me I, there was one bridesmaid who was I say an older bridesmaid in her forties mm -hmm. and uh, she came in and she's looked around. She's like, wow. She said, this is a class act. She said, when I got those emails and had your branding in them and, and mm -hmm. I got to pick when my appointment was. And she said, yeah. that was just so professional. And I thought, Oh, okay. Yes. I like that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I thought if you yeah. the blood, sweat and tears that went into that, but yeah, for real, you're like, glad it's paying off for you. So, yeah. okay. Tell me about the, um, how do they have access to the booking link and when, like, how can you control? I just don't like when brides book too early. Like they have to, they have that, you know, 10 to 12 week window. And that's when I send out the email. That's like, congratulations, let's get it started. Use this booking link. Here are the rules, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, right. But how, so how do you control that on the, with Dipsado? So the um, scheduler has parameters that you get to decide. Oh, okay. Right. And um, my scheduling link for say an in initial fitting goes out uh, about 12 to 14 weeks before their wedding date. And I have mm -hmm. it set like that, but I, I approve that it goes out. Okay. okay. I still am not brave enough to just let it go out. Oh, I know. I would be too. Oh, oh it makes yeah. me nervous. Mm -hmm. So I click. Still, that, it's preset. So you get a little like bloop, like it's time to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So I go in and go, yes, approve, go. Mm -hmm. And then that scheduler gives them only the next two weeks worth of appointments. Okay. Wow. So. Or I could, and that's how I said it. I think the other day I changed it to three weeks because I have some brides that I knew 
we're going to have some scheduling difficulties. Mm -hmm. So, and it says it in my email, this scheduler is only going to show you the next three weeks. If you need an appointment later, let's talk because Mm -hmm. I don't want to rush. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I want you to feel rushed. Yes. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And they can pick their appointment and there you go. Mm -hmm. I like my, Ooh, the wheels are spinning. I'm getting so excited. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you, um, you mentioned that you put contracts in. So Mm -hmm. I, I present my contracts at the first fitting. So I'm, Mm -hmm. but I like the idea of having the bride sign something before they come. So what does that look like for you? Do you, I mean, and you can be as vague as you feel comfortable sharing here. No, no problem. (laughs) No. So the first email that goes out that says, yes, you're, I have room in my calendar for you. Only you don't, you are not officially on my calendar until you do two things, pay for the alterations deposit fee Mm -hmm. and sign the contract. Okay. So that in that, that email has the invoice in it and the contract link. And so I, they can pay through square PayPal. And I also give them my Venmo name Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and you can link it up to that. I think you can link it to some version of QuickBooks if you really feel like you need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, they, they'll pay that and then they'll pay, then they'll sign the con read and sign the contract. Then I have to countersign the contract. Okay. Yeah. So that's their confirmation is like, okay, you mm-hmm. receive the money, then you're okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Something, as soon as they pay, something goes back to them that says, thank you for paying, mm-hmm. you know, and then, yeah. you know, you'll be hearing from me, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. That's so the great. next thing like, that they get from me is, um, is. Oh gosh, which order is it in? It probably doesn't matter. Um, a questionnaire that has a little bit more information that I want from them and they have to download pictures of themselves and their dress. Mm -hmm. So that's part of that questionnaire. And I've never had anybody balk at that. Yeah. And, um, it all, I also asked them, are you also interested in the day of dressing service or custom veil or gown preservation? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's when they start, start to see, oh, there's other things here. Yes. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, my pricing ga- guide goes out to them. Okay. So they can see oh, okay. what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's yeah. great. Um, and it's not like, I like how that's not the first thing. They've already like experienced you. They've interacted with you and like how you work, what kind of professionalism to expect before they start seeing numbers. So that's mm-hmm. a great flow. So you just rattled off, like you're getting help with like your tax prep, your scheduling, your um, communication, your booking. Um, invoices. Invoices. Like that is so much. Mm-hmm. Now, so, so when I'm, um, the other thing you have to input to Dovisado is your prices. Okay. Okay. And those are called packages. So Mm -hmm. that's a little confusing because sometimes, you know, we're like, oh, I have a bridal package. Well, in Dovisado, a package for me is a hem. Okay. Raw cups, you Mm -hmm. know? Yes. So when it's time to create um, their their invoice, or as I'm actually working on the dress, I'm like, okay, today I did cups. I'm going to put that in the invoice. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, so I put each item in there and then it calculates it for me, mm-hmm. which is great because math, you know. Yeah. And, um, Same. and <laughs> it's just, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I can't do math. I can do math. Um, and um, I can put in that they had already paid their $100 alterations fee or $50 mm-hmm. for bridesmaids or whatever. And then I can send that invoice to them prior to them coming to their final fitting. Now I have started that people are not paying online for their final fitting and for mm-hmm. their final invoice. I want them to pay either cash or check because oh, okay. I'm not happy with the credit card fees. You know, mm-hmm. when you have that big ticket, mm-hmm. it goes. Yeah. Away. Yeah. <laughs> for the credit card fees. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just the thing I've started doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is a great, I'm just, really excited for people to hear that there are options to simplify. And I, okay. I know that there's a, an investment that goes with Dipsado. So is there like, what are, are there different price points or is it just like, I'll I'll be honest. I pay about 300 for the year. 
Oh, that's totally not bad. I think it's pretty reasonable. Oh my gosh. I was expecting more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if the price went up, but you have to keep your eyes on it. Like follow them on Instagram because they will do, like they just did a birthday sale. Oh, cool. And, And you can enter into some of their contests that they have and you can win free Dubsado for lifetime. Oh my gosh. I'm literally your contest. I never won. <laughs> Maybe they'll hear this and they'll be like, she needs to be our spokeswoman. And right, then we'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was just thinking like 300 a year. That's like, well, speaking of math, like not much Nothing. a month at all. Like you think mm-hmm. of all of like your other like monthly business expenses or, I know. and this is not even, wow. To I am really you impressed. Time, your time yes. is worth so much. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're um, saying I interrupted you and it sounded good. (laughs) So their training is amazing because they have really good um, videos Mm -hmm. and then you can call customer service and they will talk you through something. I think they only allow you to talk through two problems at a time. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know you could be on there forever right um but you do have to take the initiative to set it up or talk to someone who already has it and say how did mm-hmm. you do this yeah so, yeah yeah wow okay um and that's like something that I would need because I know I can spend anything like techie I just I spend so much time like trying to and I'm always thinking there has to be like a YouTube video or some kind of like shortcut so knowing that there's like a solid support system um and that's not always the case with there's another website that I was thinking of using for videos. And I was like, okay, I'm willing to make the investment, but there were, the support was horrible. And it would have a little like, you know, question person in the corner, like ask me for help. And it was like, um, like where did they go? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And then it's like, they would just like leave. And I'm like, okay. So knowing that they have like real people helping and real training videos is mm-hmm. big seller for me. <laughs> yes. And they'll even, if you put your question in the question box, mm-hmm. I mean, you can call. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they're on your time, not my time. Yeah. <laughs> their time, I think. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's great for you. Yeah. That like but, rarely um, happens. I feel like, I feel like I'm always like trying to work with Eastern time zone. So <laughs> yeah, so that's the opposite. But if I, like, I put a question into the little box and then the response will be like, we're going to get back to you in the next 24 hours. I've mm-hmm. never had to wait 24 hours. Oh my goodness. Ever. No, I've waited, you know, and if you're in that, you shouldn't let yourself get to that point where you're like, mm-hmm. you need them right now. Right, right. You know, think ahead, be a good manager mm-hmm. of your time. But, you know, but they have said, you know, it will be 24 hours. And like two hours later, I get a response on my email and or, or on the little box mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that says, this is the answer to your question. What else do you need? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the same I mean, people in the videos are the people that you talk to um so they're real people they're real people wow yeah like wow my guy, mind is um, blown so like good, you know ideas. he's so good on those videos and mm-hmm. I called there and he's like hi this is Cam I'm like like the Cam he's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. you're like I love the line in this training when you tell me how to enter right. my <laughs> that's so funny yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> So then, okay, how much time? Because I'm thinking, okay, it's March. Is it too late in the season for me to get started or for us to like dabble in this? Or would you recommend like thinking about it in like, you know, when we approach the off season or would I have enough time to tackle this before things get really, because, you know, like, yes, inquiries, I feel like the inquiry season is like we're halfway through it, but it's not like it's going to go away anytime soon. No, it's not really rooting around business anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I purchased it in, um, like I said, Black Friday, and then Mm -hmm. I sat down when it was slow season, but then I realized I could have done that anytime. Okay. You know, because you can probably do work on the back end without it being live. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, along the way your brides are getting these like lame emails or like, no, yeah, not until it was live. And they tell you to make an account, like make yourself a project. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. And then go work through the workflow yeah. and see what the emails look like. And do you like how they sound when you get them? Do all the links work and mm-hmm. whatever. And so, and I've learned to do that. Okay. Um, and anytime I change something and when I haven't done that, it gets me every time. <laughs> 
Oh no. <laughs> I'm so thankful brides are forgiving. I'm like, yeah. and I'll say to them, oh, I just started this, you know, working yeah. with this client management system. And, you know, mm-hmm. thank you for being great, gracious to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one, I feel like I'm just like totally throwing all these questions. So thanks no, for being okay. like answering all them. Okay. So when you mentioned the prices, cause I, set you know at the first consult so i'm going through the cost of things and i say it's going to be between this amount and this amount so how do you work that in Dubsado with the packages having preset prices well you can okay this is how i've done that this is my workaround mm-hmm. right is yes i have my little price list in there and i'm you know clicking on it to add to to the invoice but I also do have, and you can, you can change the price. Okay. Or you can there. make like a custom package. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, you know, like the other day, I didn't want to charge someone as much for a bag 10 because it was just mm-hmm. a little teeny round, you know, yeah. <laughs> and so I wasn't going to give them. So when I went in there, I, I lowered the price and then press apply. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you okay. can, you can budget. You know, it's not like set in stone because that's like with what I use now, I have some set amounts, but then a lot of them I'm doing custom amounts for so many things. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, that took longer. Oh, you know what I mean? So yeah. glad that it's not like setting mm-hmm. once and forever and you're done. And it's like, those are your yeah. set prices. So okay. and they have a time tracker on there too. Oh. So if you want to time yourself for how long something takes, mm-hmm. right. And then show the customer, this is how long it took. Yeah. You could do that. Okay. You know, charge them for your time. Mm-hmm. I haven't used it yet. Okay. Well, that'll be the next episode. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Telling us how the time works. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this was so mind blowing. I just didn't realize how much it, how helpful this really was. And it's all. And I know we talked it. about like, oh, it'd be cool to have like a video visual, but I, I almost feel like that would be like overwhelming for me because mm-hmm. I'd be like, wait, what does this button do? Blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. you mentioned that there's a free version that we can kind of tinker around with, yeah, I think so, yeah. mm-hmm. or just um, some kind of like a trial or something yeah. to get an idea. Um, and as with everything else, you know, for those of us who we never thought we'd have a website, and look at us now, mm-hmm. um, with everything, you will get better the more you. And I, and you mentioned this earlier too, of how like year one, it sounded like you kind of just used the basics and then year two, you're like, okay, what else is behind the scenes here that I can tap into? So Mm -hmm. that is so great. Cause there are, um, especially now when there's so many opportunities to automate things, even if something like Dipsado sounds overwhelming, you know, we just want to encourage listeners to look, think of the things that are so annoying to you, whether it is like the responding to the emails or like, um, I remember, gosh, back in the day, sending, like trying to schedule people and being like, how about this day, this day, or this day, or this day? And then it's like, then you wait for the response. And then you have to go the next bride with those leftover dates. You know what I mean? It just took forever. So it's like, whatever, Mm -hmm. think of one thing that is like so annoying to you. And there are so many resources available. So, but this one sounds like the best one that I've heard. It's it's pretty amazing because it has everything. And they, I think they started out I'm pretty sure this is how they started out was for wedding photographers. Oh, okay. A lot of wedding professionals use this tool, Mm -hmm. you know? So when I did call Cam the one day, Mm -hmm. (laughs) your friend Cam, and I said, I'm a bridal (laughs) seamstress. He's like, Oh, now seamstresses are using this. You know? Yes. Oh, that is so cool. Mm -hmm. And then do they, um, I love spreadsheets. So you is there like a way to keep uh, track of like all the brides for the year? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how, and you can see like how many you pre-booked for the month or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can sort it by date, you know, okay. so I'll do. So that's what I have when I go on my project yeah. page, I can see all of the brides for April, May, June. Mm-hmm. And I can also see who signed their contract, who didn't sign their contract. Um, who needs the, you know, the push. Yeah. And, um, who paid, who didn't pay. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. when you're all done with a person, um, you just press archive and it archives the name for you. Yeah. Cause I, I don't know about you, but I have some repeat customers Mm because I do bridesmaids. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And also I get a lot of reviews now because that's part of my workflow, you know, four weeks after your wedding. And I've learned I should probably do a little bit longer after that. Because mm-hmm. by then they have their pictures. Yeah. They mm-hmm. always have their photos four weeks after. 
that I send them something, an email that says, you know, thank you for working with So Glorious and, you know, trust me with your gown. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to do a review on my website, click this link. If you'd like to do it on Google, click this link. Mm -hmm. And it has the link. All they have to do is click on it and write the review. Wow, that is great. And then you're not like, I have to send this. I have to request a review. Yes. That cringy stuff. All of these cringy things. You just have a button to press. (laughs) I'm booked, you know, um, (laughs) leave a review, sign this contract. All those are just buttons. So I know. So then how do you, um, because my contract has the projected um, estimate that they also sign. Like, oh, they acknowledge that this is the estimate, whatever. You learn Mm -hmm. all these things once, if you have somebody difficult, you change things. So I remember having somebody who was like, you didn't tell me how much it was going to be. And I'm like, girl, we literally, okay, whatever. So I, you know, you say the same thing to every bride. So you're like, I know what I said to you because I say the same thing to everybody. So, um, but I didn't say that in person, but I was, so now that's on my contract (laughs) is like, (laughs) right. I agree that I received this quote and blah, blah, blah. So how do you, have you had to work around that or have you not? My contract doesn't have the amount in it. Okay. Um, but I would think that it would be easy once they leave and Mm -hmm. you've really figured, like I give people an estimate before Mm -hmm. they leave here for their first thing. And I do ask them, do you want that on a piece of paper, right. you know, you want um, yeah. an email with it. And they're like, no, that's okay. No one really has ever asked me to have it. Yeah. Um, and even I could write it on, I have another sheet that like we write all the things that I'm going to be doing and they mm-hmm. initial that. So I can just put the estimate on that or something. Because I do like the idea of having the contract you pre-signed. Could, you could do it in Dubsado easily. Mm-hmm. You know, after they leave, you could say, okay, here's your estimate and put it in the email, you know, an email and send yeah. it off to them and make that part of your workflow. Yeah. That would be so hard to do. Yeah. You know, the, the, so you would just have to edit it each time you do that for a bride. Okay. So, you know, yeah. go into that email and go, okay, I have to put the number in. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lots of great things to think about. Thank you yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. And then I will put your, is it okay if I put you as like a little contact if people have questions sure if people want to ask me questions you're the, like you're the representative <laughs> i am not the expert i'm not dubsado certified if you had cam's number we could put cam's right yeah. Yeah. I, I am not that person like i'm still <laughs> learning oh my gosh but we'll put your um your affiliate link because that's very important you've shared a lot of valuable information so it's really important to have your link in here and then um glorious one word so oh perfect all it is very easy Mm -hmm. okay well um we'll find another excuse to get you back on because this is it's always fun to hear your wisdom (laughs) okay thank you